The coaches have the best intentions, but the reality is we're usually coaching 20 or 30 swimmers. You pretty much run along the side and scream and you, yeah, go. To think that you can see what's going on in a real kind of focused way, in a, in a detailed way, just isn't practical. Even with a number of years I've coached, I still rely on being able to see a swimmer up close in order to make uh, significant changes and really many times look at them underwater. The endless pool fits right into that. We're missing a lot because we don't really see exactly what's going on under the water. Communication between the coach and the athlete, it's in every other sport and now it's coming to swimming. My name is Gary Conley. I'm the head coach here at the University of Kentucky. I've been a head coach here for about 20 years. When you're in the big pool, everybody's going at the same time. Sometimes you can't get to the kid to tell them what it is you want to tell them because they're off on the other wall or something like that. This new endless pool that we've got is, is probably the biggest step forward in swimming technology that's come along in a long time. To be able to be right there with the, the athlete and, and have instant feedback for them is, is fabulous. Being that close just makes it a tremendous tool in the arsenal of coaching. Endless Pools has been a key part of my success for many, many years. When we got an endless pool at Auburn University, uh, it was really the intention of, won't this be cool, and recruits will want to swim in it. I didn't realize I would have uh, so many swimmers at my highest level that would do a lot of significant development in that pool. One of the great things about that endless pool is you can stand there and you can make adjustments uh, in a moment's notice. I have my bopper stick that I've always tagged them with and said, you know, stop here, and then we, we have make adjustments and they keep going, and I'll just actually help manipulate them while they're in the water reminding them to keep their elbow high or keep their armpit high or keep their uh, hips rotating, those kind of things, and it's real easy to do in the endless pool. I love it. I have a tendency to kind of drop my elbow and just like slide it through the water. And David will be like, hey, do you see that? Like put your head in and like tilt your hips and then you stabilize. When you're in a 50 freestyle, you can't make mistakes. You know, Madison, when she swims in the pool, what she likes is that she's able to see the front catch of her stroke. She's able to see her hips rotating back and forth to make sure she's uh, lined up properly. Your line ideally is supposed to be straight. You're just supposed to rotate on your line, but my legs were like over here when I was reading this way, so I was kind of off and I didn't realize it. So you can correct yourself quite easily. You get the feedback of the water going by your body, which is that's essential for practicing your race. The Endless Pool Elite really starts to open up the opportunity for coaches and swimmers to really have this controlled environment at a much higher level. It's nice when it's all set up right there, you hit one button and you're recording. With the underwater cameras and the computer system, you're able to record them and allow the, the swimmer to see it virtually immediately. You're really able to see everything because it's right there in front of you. It's basically the same ideas videotaping a runner on a treadmill, you know, they're always going to be right there, they're always going to be in focus. I never really actually got to see myself like in a video and then like talk about it. It really gave me a good idea of where my, like my arms are, like where they enter and just like what I was doing wrong. So this is really cool, this is great. The nice thing about the endless pool is if you don't like the angle you've got then you're just going to move the camera lens over a little bit more to the left or the right or put it in the corner of the pool so you can get the thing that you're really focused on. And I really like the, the aspect that there's, there's not just one camera, you can have multiple cameras because it's right there and you can play it back instantaneously. They can see it you know, immediately. So it's much easier for them to, to connect the feel with what they really want in the correction of the stroke. I find myself wanting to take the analytical swimmer and make them more, a little more experiential and I want the, uh, the touchy-feely swimmer to understand, look, there are truths. Feel is a real sensation, can't take away from that, but scientifically you can see what's really happened. So to connect the feel and move feel toward the ideal patterns that you're, you're looking for, that is progress. And I've always liked mirrors and pools, but what I really like about the mirrors in the endless pool is you've got the flat ones so you've got that look down, but, but the angled mirror in front of you is really nice, so you get a, a much better read on what the front end of your stroke looks like. The underwater mirrors, or the mirrors on the floor of the endless pool, allow the swimmer to watch 
uh, pole pattern, head position, body rotation, uh, alignment, all kinds of different little techniques while they're swimming. A lot of our propulsion now, according to the best research right now, is basically pull straight back. And when you're working out in an endless pool, and when you can see the mirror the best, is when your head is in an ideal position, looking straight down, neck extended, right over that mirror, and groove in your stroke. I've never seen the, the mirror above the pool before. While you're swimming in one place, you can make actual changes to where your hands enter, how much you rotate, what your head position is, where your hips are. You can see it while you're doing it. I think one of the things about swimming now is it's getting so fast. What I like for myself and our coaches to look for is when do they start to lose their technique? When do the hips start falling out of line? When do they start using the legs as balancing mechanisms rather than propulsive? Where all coaches see their strokes fall apart is when the swimmer comes up to race speed. In the endless pool, you slow it down when you're, when you're really working on being precise about the stroke corrections and stuff, and as they, as they get that at the lower level speeds, then you want to step it up. The endless pool speed will go beyond the kicking speed of just about anybody in the world. They don't really have much choice. They've got to come up to that race speed because the, the water's moving that fast, you know, so you're going to get to see right away if the, if the corrections are taking place. It'll be break it down and then add speed. Improve it, add speed. Own it, add speed. As far as coaching on stroke, this is about as good as it gets. There are certain unique physiological traits that great athletes have. Deeper poles, wider poles, and in order to find the technique that works for them, you need a little bit, um, you know, larger palette, and the Elite Pool presents that. It's something that really any team can put together to get a tremendous amount of feedback that you simply couldn't get in any other way. The kids are real sold on it. it. It makes the workouts much more interesting for the athletes. There's nothing they like better to get into that thing and actually see their stroke. It's much easier for them to get it and understand it. This is probably the, the smartest thing I've ever bought as a swim coach. Everybody knows we have to train, but if you really want to improve in the sport of swimming, you're going to improve the technical side. You're going to figure out how to create more propulsion and minimize resistance. You do those two things, you become a faster swimmer. Throw some training on top of that, who knows, maybe an Olympian. <laughs>